Hey, you're watching Swerve on YouTube and today I want to show you how to make some cartoon text, but I want to show you how to make cartoon text with character. So um, if you check out what I made earlier, you would see that it looks pretty awesome. So I'm going to show you how I made this in Illustrator, so stay tuned. Alright, so here we are in Illustrator and this is the Mad Max text. So the font that I'm using now is Kaiju Monster and I think it looks pretty cool. So if you want to download it, make sure to check the description below for a download link and you should be able to get it. So um, what should we do now? So I'm going to press Ctrl A to select everything and we're going to go to Object and Expand. Alright, so once we've done that, we can select Mad Max and go to Ctrl G to group it together. And we're going to make a duplicate. So I'm going to press Ctrl C and Ctrl F. So this makes a new layer below. And for the top layer, we're going to change that to white. I'm going to press I and select the background. And for the bottom layer, what we're going to do is make a stroke. So I'm going to increase the stroke up here. And you kind of want to make sure that these gaps are still available just to create some character. So I'm going to increase it, not so far that you can't see it anymore, but around here. Right, wow, that's perfect. 26 is pretty good. And for the excess gaps that we don't want, we can just use the pen tool and just go around like that to fill it in. And we're going to take away the stroke. So I'm going to change the fill to blue and take away the stroke like that. And this bit is pretty important. So I want you to focus on the keys that I press right about now. So I'm going to press control shift and the square bracket key going backwards. All right. So that's how it goes. We basically move that layer to the bottom pile. So if we go to layers here, you should see it's all the way at the bottom. So that basically moves it behind. We're going to be using this technique throughout the whole tutorial. So it's pretty important to remember. So let's begin with the next part and that would be to expand the strokes. So we're going to select the strokes and the shape we just made. And what we're going to do is go to object, expand and OK. So now we can just use the Pathfinder to merge it together. If you can't see the Pathfinder on the right, it should be in Windows or you can press Shift, Command and F9 and just merge it together using the first option. And for the next part, we need to create a backdrop for the Fury Road. And to do this, all we need to do is go to the pen tool. Actually, let's move it up a bit. Like so. And we're going to change the color tool. Actually, before we do that, let's get the pen tool and create a little backdrop. All right, that's perfect. So the reason why I'm not creating a stroke is because I want it to be a bit more organic. And that's looking perfect. We're going to change this to a blue. So press I and select the color you want. And we're going to move this behind holding control shift and the square bracket key going backwards. All right, perfect. So we're going to move this up a bit. And that's that's looking pretty cool. So I'm going to select the Fury Road text and change it to white. Whoops. And we're pretty much set for the next stage. So in the next stage, we're going to make it 3D and we're going to add a bit more elements to create the cartoon feel. So stay tuned for the next part. All right. So before we make this 3D, what we need to do is select both our backdrops and we're going to merge it together using the Pathfinder. And I need to fix a few more bits. So I'm going to fix this area here and move it down like so. And it's looking pretty cool. So um, now we can move on to the 3D effect. And this bit's pretty simple. So I'm going to select the backdrop and make a duplicate. So Control C and Control F. And then we're going to move it backwards holding Control Shift and the square bracket key. And um, now we've done that, we can open the layers and see how things are working. So we can now press Alt 
and shift and resize it. So Alt Shift resize like this. And we're going to move it down a bit more. And we're going to change the color to a dark blue. And now we can continue to the next bit. So um, if we get our pen tool, what we need to do is make a point here, make a point over there and close it off. So what we did was bridge the gap between the two layers. And as we do this, we can move it behind holding control shift and the square bracket key going backwards. We're going to do the same all around like this and move it behind and do the same over here. I think we can. Yeah. All right. So like that. And finally, well, not finally, we can go like this. We still need to do a bit more. And what I'm going to do for this part, because we can't see the other point it connects to, what we're going to do is decrease its opacity down a bit like this. And I think it starts around here. So let's decrease that opacity as well. All right, now I can see it. So what we're going to do is get the pen tool and take it all the way to here. All right, that's good. And we're going to make it the same color. So we're going to press I and click that color and move it behind. And finally, we've got um, this area here as well. All right. And move it behind. And now we can bring up the opacity back to the way it was to 100. And we're done. All right. So we've now made it 3D we can now add some effects. So um, stay tuned for the next part and I'll see you then. All right, so this is kind of my favorite bit and this is where we add the extra features. So I'm gonna go straight into this and use the pen tool. So I'm gonna create some highlights on the edges like this. So I'm gonna go from here, click there, go somewhere around here and I'm just gonna make a sharp point to create some defining edges and we're just going to stop it around here and close it off. So if we zoom out, it does look like a really, you know, worn out feel. So um, if I go around and do this, I wouldn't try it at the top because that's not the right angle. So it's kind of anywhere around here. So I could create a little point around this side like so and just go around with a little highlight like that and it looks pretty cool so um let's see another place we can add it is around here so i could go around like that and let's see how that looks all right, that looks all right. It looks all right, but um, how can I fix this? Let's see. So, um, all right, let's try this and zoom out. All right, that looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna move it up a bit just so I can get a better feel for it. All right, let's move this around here. Get the pen tool and create another point like that. Change it to white. Yeah, I like the way it's looking already. So um, I may take away this point. It's kind of like trial and error. It works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So um, let's see. All right, so what I'm gonna do is get a point and I'm gonna create a shadow over this side like that I'm gonna make it the same color as the backdrop and it makes it look it makes the um, makes this area look like it's um, poking forward which it does it looks pretty cool so I'm gonna do that to this side as well and it just looks really nice the way it works I may decrease the shadow a bit or the highlights may need to merge these two together 
right so i'm gonna use the pathfinder and merge it and i think it looks pretty cool right now so i'm gonna do this this section over here and for this part i'm just gonna go up like that and i might close it off here let's see how that looks it looks all right i think we could um make it a bit thicker all right that's much better all right that's looking really cool so um yeah i think it looks really good um we can create some worn out points around here like this and just make it look a bit rough because you know mad max is a you know a rough guy so let's see how it works when we add little dinks and imperfections to the areas all right so as we go through we may need to um subtract these areas so i'm going to select these two shapes that we just made and i'm going to select the backdrop and what we're going to do is use the shape builder tool to get rid of this area so we're going to press alt and drag out like that and drag out like that so that basically just cuts out that area and i think it looks pretty cool so before my keyboard died i was in the middle of adding some extra features so i'm gonna get the number two written down i'm gonna resize it and i'm gonna rotate it a bit like that all right and that's looking pretty cool so i'm gonna make it a gray or gold let's make it gold and see how that turns out all right that's much better may need to make it a bit faint yep even better so what i'm going to do is make another layer so i'm going to duplicate it holding alt and dragging it i'm going to change this one to a darker orange maybe a bit darker all right that's looking much better so what i'm going to do is resize it holding alt and shift and i'm going to move it behind holding control and the square bracket key going backwards and i'm going to move it away from the x just a bit more just to give it some space i'm going to get a pen tool actually before we do that we need to select both of these numbers and i'm going to go to object expand click ok and now we can get the pen tool to fill in the gap so we're going to do exactly what we did last time and just fill in the areas we want to keep and this bit is pretty simple so i'm just going to go through quickly and fill in this area move it back um let's see this area as well and then move it back holding control and the bracket key going backwards and for this one i'm gonna guess it so i'm gonna see all right that's pretty much fine and move it back all right that's pretty cool so um now that i've done that what i'm gonna do is select all these shapes that we just made and what we're going to do is merge it together pressing ctrl g we may need to resize it a bit more and i think that's pretty cool all right so that's fine and what we're going to do is add some highlights so i'm going to get the pen tool and do exactly what we did last time we're gonna do that let's change the color quickly to white so we can see what we're doing all right so that's looking pretty cool and we're gonna do the same around here so gonna go down click here like that 
All right, that's looking pretty cool. And I think we're pretty much done for that side. All right, so um, before we move on, we're going to add some extra shadows. So I'm going to go over this point and just create a shape and make it darker than the original. So I'm going to press I and get that color and change it to a darker color. Maybe a bit darker. So like red. And we're going to do the same around here. So um, let's see what we can do. And we're going to move it back. I'm starting to like it a lot. So I'm going to move this highlight a bit up. All right, that's perfect. Um, next point, let's see what we need to do. So what I'm going to do actually, you know, I'm going to merge um, these shapes I've just made with the two. Control G. And what I want to do is create a shadow above the X. So um, let's see what we can do. We can make a new layer or duplicate this one. So Control C, Control F. We're going to choose the one below and we're going to move it across like that. And this bit is pretty simple. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to make it um, Actually, first of all, let's merge it together and change it to black. And we're going to move it behind. So we're going to press control square bracket key going backwards. And now we can see where the shadow is going to be. Let's see how we're going to do this. So I'm going to select this main shape. So the main shape of the Mad Max and select this too. And what we're going to do is get the shape builder tool. And we're going to get rid of the excess bit. So what we're going to do is press Alt and click on the area. And it should restrict to the shape. And what we're going to do is change it to an, a lower opacity. So um, let's change it to overlay. And increase it. All right, that's looking pretty good. And what we're going to do is select those two shapes again and duplicate it. So we're going to press Control G first to group it, then Control C, Control F. And this time we're going to make it um, normal. So we're going to have to go in to this layer and select these two shapes and change it back to normal. And now we can change the opacity to around, let's say 20. So the reason why I made a new layer on top was because when you overlay black on white, the shadow doesn't um, really show on the white. So that's why I had to duplicate it. So this is kind of what I was going for. And I really like how it's looking. So this is the end of the tutorial. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you in another video.